Are you investing a significant chunk of your budget into learning and development and aren't getting the results that you expect? If so, you're not alone. But the statistics are really startling. Over the last 30 years, the amount of money that's been poured into learning and development hasn't really given us the results we desire. And that change and changing people is much more difficult than we imagine. Hello, my name is Kristen Clark. I'm a certified axiogenics coach with Insight Coaching, and I help people understand the connection between their thinking and their performance to help you and your organization increase performance and the results to your bottom line. With some simple changes in people's perspectives, I can help them think better so that they can achieve the results they desire and you desire as well. So there are some common issues that organizations are facing with learning and development. There are high costs for one, implementing learning management systems to teach employees the basic skills that you need them to learn. But often those learning management systems, they don't address some of the key fundamental issues that employees are struggling with, like procrastination, for example, and how to get more done and how to keep their focus throughout the day. And also the numbers are showing that despite the large amounts of money that are being spent, employee engagement is at an all time low. While employee engagement numbers haven't improved that much over the last 20 or 30 years since the pandemic, they're even a bit lower, which is a little scary because we now have so many employees working from home. What's startling is that if you had any chinks in your cultural armor before the pandemic, those chinks have grown even more. So problems that you had in culture, communication prior to the pandemic when everybody was in the same building, at least we had the chance that possibly we would learn some things while we were around the water cooler or popping into each other's offices. But now that people are more dispersed, some companies now are suddenly in multiple states and people are just not communicating the way that they were before, we're not becoming aware of the problems as easily as we did in the past. So culture has an even more vital role in your organization, and it's more challenging now to maintain that. An interesting statistic from the Society of Human Resource Management, or SHRM, indicates that 70% of employees would be more likely to stay with their companies if they had access to better learning and development. What we need in industry is a paradigm shift, a slight shift that radically changes how we think about learning and development. We need to stop thinking about a one size fits all for everyone. So everyone comes to the learning table or the learning training room, we'll say, with different knowledge and skills and experiences in their lives and backgrounds and goals and aspirations. And trying to apply the same kind of learning model to everyone makes it really difficult to give people what they need. Think about it. How often have you sat in a learning situation or a training seminar and wanted to do something else or be anywhere else? And what kind of impact does that have on your learning? I mean, we've all attended webinars from home where we're doing two things at once because the information just doesn't really apply to us. Now, absolutely, there are reasons that we need to have training and everyone needs to get the same training at the same time. I mean, there are compliance issues and regulations that all companies have to meet. And those are absolutely reasons that everyone gets the same training, whether you like it or not. And then you get tested on it and you make sure that you're I's are dotted and your T's are crossed because there are legal ramifications for those kinds of trainings. So absolutely, that kind of training needs to happen. But there's other training opportunities that we're missing. One of the key ingredients that's missing is the understanding that everybody comes at training from a different perspective, different needs, different life experiences. We believe the paradigm shift has to happen at the individual employee level. We need to recognize as an organization that getting the employee buy-in and making it relevant to an employee is absolutely key. A study by the Aberdeen Group found that companies with a strong focus on learning and development achieve 21% higher employee engagement than those who do not. And a study by the Center for Creative Leadership found that employees who participate in self-leadership development programs are more likely to be promoted and earn higher salaries than those who do not. At Insight Coaching, we teach a foundational competency called Valuegenic Self-Leadership. Self-Leadership Development teaches individuals how they are responsible for their own learning and development, for their own career progression and satisfaction and happiness they achieve in life. What we help them do is uncover the thinking that may be helping or hindering, supporting or sabotaging their success in all areas of their life. And once you start to understand how you may be the roadblock to your own success and happiness, 
you become more engaged in the process. Valuegenic self-leadership is something that can be taught throughout a company at all levels and can become the golden thread that you weave through your entire organization from your mission, vision, and values to your training at your C-suite levels to any and every level of your organization. Implementing self-leadership development helps an employee in every aspect where they are linking their thinking to improve their performance. So this can help with procrastination, organization, communication skills, building better relationships with their teams, becoming more compassionate leaders. One company that we've been working with for many years has implemented self-leadership development at every level of their organization. They use it in the hiring and selection process, the onboarding process, they provide feedback to new employees to help them hit the ground running and understand how self-leadership is an expectation in working at the organization. They provide coaching to leaders and other key personnel in their organization. Additionally, the concepts learned in self-leadership development are applied in other settings, including handling difficult conversations, improving performance, and helping teams work better together. To maximize self-leadership development training, it's helpful that an organization communicates clearly with their employees as to the expectations for the training, that everyone is being offered this opportunity and that it's a new way of thinking at our organization and learning about your role as a self-leader in meeting the mission, vision, and values of the organization, this training will help you be able to do that. Because self-leadership development provides employees the tools they need to be able to achieve the goals and expectations of the organization. When implementing a system like self-leadership development, it's really important to start with leadership buy-in. So the kinds of companies that we work with the top leaders get involved first. This isn't a thing that let's wait and see how it works with the employees in the field. This is a kind of training where the leaders at the highest level learn about themselves and start demonstrating and becoming role models for the behavior that they want to see from their team. Just by becoming a role model and starting to match your talk with your walk or your decisions with your actions, starts to make a big difference showing employees that you really mean what you say. Too many times we see a whack-a-mole approach to leadership training and we all read a book or we go through a program, we think about it for a little while, but you know, the effects fade away over time. Valuegenic self-leadership is a different kind of program where we teach people new ways of thinking and being. And this is a practice that starts to become a part of the fabric of an organization that can be weaved through all the levels. We call it the golden thread of learning and development. An interesting example that a client shared with me recently was about a problem that had come up at their organization where a vendor didn't have the supplies on time and it was gonna cause a delay. And the employee was explaining how frustrating it was to go through this process and not understand exactly what was happening with the vendor. And the employee was remembering the approach that was used at other organizations they'd worked at in the past where it was described that we put the hammer down and the employee had consulted with the management and said, I did step A, step B, step C, and still the vendor is not communicating. We're going to have some problems here. And the employee asked, when do we put the hammer down? And the manager said to them as a role model, we never put the hammer down. We always work for a solution that's equitable for everyone. So while the employee was struggling internally that they weren't able to make better progress and get the results that they wanted and were ready to resort to their old behaviors, the organization modeled their values and told them, basically, we never treat people disrespectfully and we try to work towards an equitable solution. I thought that was just an amazing example of how a company walks its talk that we're better than putting the hammer down and your organization can be that way too, if it isn't already. But the client company that I'm referring to has unprecedented levels of on-time completion of their projects and in part attributes this to the positive interactions that their employees and their leaders can communicate with the vendors and suppliers so they can achieve the best possible outcomes. Valuegenic self-leadership development can be adapted to virtually any industry. Currently, it's being used in the healthcare industry and medical, in construction management, manufacturing, tool and die, education, in financial, and even with university students. And if I didn't name your particular industry, it can be adapted to your industry as well. And we work with companies of all sizes. So as small as a startup organization where there's only a handful to large hospital systems, we have coaches that are working with us throughout the world. 
and we can meet your needs virtually anywhere that you're located. The testimonials we've received from our clients that are the most moving are how the results impacted them on a very personal level. But as you know, there is no difference between our personal and our professional lives. We have one life. And if you learn how to communicate better with your teenager or your wife, and one of our clients said that our program helped save his marriage, I'm sure it also helped save relationships and build better relationships with their teens. So no matter where you're struggling, whether it's procrastination or self-doubt and fear, those areas are gonna bleed over from your personal to your professional or your professional to your personal. And Valuegenic self-leadership development will help you no matter what area of your life you need to improve, make better, or change. So in conclusion, I wanna just go back for a minute that the problems with learning and development stem from the fact that learning and development in the past has been applied on the grand scale, one size fits all for everyone. Valuegenic self-leadership is one unique systematic approach, but it looks at a person's thinking from their own unique perspective. And when we assess and diagnose a person's thinking in a very objective and scientific way, we can help them understand how their particular thinking based on their own life experience, which is going to be different for every single person, impacts their ability to achieve what they most desire and what you most need for your organization to be successful. And when we marry these two together and we help employees become the very best that they can so that they can have more happiness and success and fulfillment in their life, it's a win, win, win. The things that you learn with Valuegenic Self-Leadership alter how you see yourself. Once you learn your role in your own learning and your responsibility for yourself, you can't unlearn that. It's kind of like seeing a picture and once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. So once you understand that your thinking is what's getting in the way, and that you are your own worst enemy, then you don't have anyone to blame but yourself. And that really makes a big difference for people in their learning and development. That's moving the needle in a long lasting, meaningful way. If you're an owner, an executive, a manager, or anyone in a position who can influence the type of learning and development that your company engages in, give me a call. You'll see a link below. I'd love to chat about where you are right now and what kind of things you'd like to see change and how I might be able to help you implement something in your organization. We can take a little test drive and I'd be happy to show you how this works and teach you something about yourself that you, well, you probably know, but you didn't know what to do about it. Don't wait another day. Click the link below, schedule a time to chat, and let's see what's going on in your organization and how I can help you make a difference to create a truly valuegenic organization and a culture where everybody wins. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.